Hey, hello, scrappers. Yeah, I thought today I'd uh, go ahead and tear down a ceiling fan. It's been a while since I did one. And I had a request, someone asking how it, how it was done. So, I that might be a good video to do. Tell you what, been busy. Today's the first, and of course the new ad came out. I've already got two calls. So, refrigerator, so I'll pick it, it up on the way home from work tomorrow. And then, uh, and then I got a riding mower. So after I ate dinner, I'll uh, hook up the little trailer and run out and pick it up. It's not too far away. Yeah, these ceiling fans aren't too bad. I'll try to put peanut butter there behind me. I don't know if you probably can't see him behind me. There he is. And then I got the gray cat right over here watching me. And a lot of times I like to break these loose by hand. Sometimes you try to do it with a drill and you'll just almost instantly strip them. But now I got them broke loose a little bit. This time of year with all the heat, people are using their ceiling fans and a lot of them go out, so you probably see a lot of ceiling fans this time of year. It'd be nice if I could get rid of this piece, slide it off, but get it out of the way. I'll pull this screw out and see what happens. I got a ground screw there. That screw, then I got a screw here I can't get at. Oh, there I can. Now I can, then pull this pin out. Okay. Now that'll come on. That piece of tin will come off. And that's plastic. I got a pin here, a little keeper key. And that takes that piece off of there. And I got three Phillips head screws right here. Just break them loose. Sometimes they get a pull of dirt and you can't get that Phillips bit seated good in there and that'll cause them to strip pretty easy too. So, so far for the beginners, pretty much if you don't have the cordless drill, that's fine. You can pretty well do this all with a Phillips screwdriver. Get that piece off. He was a little guy. I don't know you guys haven't seen him in a little while. He's getting big. What's the matter? Something scaring you? <laughs> he stays at my feet. I think he's worse than peanut butter. Yeah, that one is pretty tight. These would be easy to strip with the drill. Yeah, last month was pretty busy. That's why pretty much all month I was just doing videos of what I was picking up and what I was taking to the yard. Pretty much the only reason I, I had anything to take to the yard is because I loaded it up to go straight to the yard. Other stuff I bring home and unload to sort out and then to process. <coughs> I 
on a lot of these uh, blade holders, magnets not sticking there. So, could be aluminum, could be die cast. A lot of them are die cast. Got the small Phillips right here to hold the switch in. I don't know if I really need to take that out. Probably not, just cut the wires. So I really haven't had much time to do a teardown video. connectors I like to cut them off and just they usually have a little bit of copper in them and steel so I go ahead and throw them in the shred bucket that wires are kind of in a knot down here not much room to get my fingers in there. I'm going to try to cut it close. Get it out of the way. Now, I'm probably going to have to have a good socket. So I got that big nut down in there. Yeah, what do we got here? 15 sixteenths? That's a little bit on the big side. So that's probably three quarter. Yeah, these things are kind of that's seven eighths. We could try that one. It's hard to get off that thing. Yeah, seven eighths feels about right. Now do I have a half inch drive in here? One second. I don't have the half inch drive, so I'll do the next best thing. Bring out my half inch drive impact. 7-8 socket with a ratchet would work just fine. Okay, now we got a bunch of little screws around here. This is a little different. Got a plastic piece that held the blade on. It's just got a straight slot in it. And that one's really brittle, so it won't turn. That one's doing the same thing. So, what else can we do? Well, I'm going to suggest channel locks. Might shut that door behind me. That's turning it. I think it's real brittle. 
probably been out in the sun for a few years. I might shut that door behind me. I'm not sure if that's messing much with the Okay, I'm going to hit this with the grinder real quick. Okay. Now we're going to See, I ground the spot off, the shiny spot here. Okay, but I've gotten this bottle. It looks like Windex, but it's not. It's uh, actually a teaspoon of copper sulfate mixed with the, you know, the water. Copper sulfate and get it at Home Depot. Maybe Ace Hardware. Zep Root Kill. Probably find it online. But I just put a teaspoon in there, a heaping teaspoon. There's no. You can put two in there if you want. Depends on how strong you want it, but this is really strong enough. So you, you grind it. Okay, see how that turned dark? If that was cast aluminum, you wouldn't have seen any change at all. Since it went dark, die cast, which is what if most of these are. And then uh, if you see a bunch of little bubbles, magnesium. Don't throw it in the fire. So since that got dark, die cast I've got what did I do with it I got a piece of magnesium I found the other day Another thing, these got a little bit of weight to them. Die cast, I think she's got a little tin and some other stuff in there. Well, of course, it's still non magnetic. Uh, I think what I did with that piece of magnesium, I set it aside somewhere. Now I don't see it. So these will all go in die cast anyway. I'll set these aside over here. <coughs> I might have taken that out of, out of this room. I know I, I need to get a bucket just for magnesium. I don't really see a whole lot of magnesium anyway, but. Kind of looking around as I move around to see if I can see where I spot you know, where I put it. I may need to use it, and that's not really want to come off, but it may not have to. And of course, we got more Phillips screws. Yeah, that one doesn't want to. That one might strip.
for the most part. Now we got to remove the two metals off. Usually just put these at an angle and, uh, and rotate them. They're pretty rusty. Sometimes you may have to spray WD-40 on them. Another way to loosen those up, <coughs> if you don't have an angle grinder, get one, you'll use it a bunch. But you can use a hacksaw if you have to. Usually there's a real tight tolerance when they put those on there, so... Okay, that one still doesn't want to go. Time for some WD. I just picked up some crud off the bottom and plugged the nozzle. Yeah, I got some more. Yeah, now it's moving. Yeah, that one's not going to come off as long as that's on there. Uh, I said I got another screw on this other side. So when you're doing this, remember, check both sides. didn't have the bearing here and that I could probably knock that right on out of there. It's pretty rusted up. Yeah, let's see. It's gotta come out. So I'm gonna put this over here in the vise. My helping hand. Okay, get on the other side of the camera. threaded. Yep, looks like it. I say it's almost rusted to the berry. And that feels like uh, aluminum also. Insulation. So now the fun part is going to be cutting all these copper loops. I'm going to hit this with the grinder real quick. Let's try die cast. Okay, you see there's no change in that one. That's still just silver, just wet silver now, so. That one there's actually cast aluminum. Almost makes you wonder why they might cast aluminum here and die cast on the others, but maybe this has got a little more pressure or torque or something on it. 
Now for getting these uh, several ways you can do this copper. Get a try to move you in a little bit closer. Could have zoomed in too, I guess. A lot of times I try to get up underneath them, kind of raise up. And uh, these here are uh, the kind of grease right here, white hot. D O Y L E Doyle Doyle brand. I don't know if pick that up or not. But they're Harbor Freight, like fifteen dollars. Pretty good pair of uh, cutters. So what you can do, you can nip them like that. Raise it up so you can get the cutters under there. Just take it in a couple three bites. I'm going to show you a couple different ways. See if I can hook onto that bearing and maybe I can just rotate it. Yeah, maybe. Now this whole metal here is kind of bending. Uh, I'm not sure if these will work, cable cutters, but you may be able to get them in there. You say kind of raise that up. Spread your cable cutters apart. And that'll cut them. These cut copper tubing pretty good too. Another way you can do it, some of this inner one they don't want to raise up too much, but you can take a cold chisel and a hammer, you can do it that way, time consuming. Yeah. Which that's a pretty small screwdriver. Doesn't really want to get up under that these inner circle ones. But I got a like a little owl here. I can stick that in there. Now if a guy could find some like needle nose wire cutters, that would be awesome. these just halfway decent pair of wire cutters will just get right in there so I didn't even raise that one up a little bit tougher but not too bad yeah if you're doing a whole bunch of these it'll probably get to your wrist advice does come in handy but you can do it without it And it might actually be easier to do these inside ones. Before I do the outside. It seems like when these spread, then they're getting right in front of the opening.
Yeah, it's warm out here. It's like 98, 99 degrees, something like that. I'm not sure about the dew point and all that above it, but I'm supposed to get some cooler weather Sunday. I'm supposed to have rain too, so I may not be able to get out to that big job. Might be too wet to get out there. Say so it's supposed to rain Sunday morning and possibly into Sunday afternoon. So, but uh, give me time to get out here in the shop, get some stuff tore down, and maybe do another video or two. And, then uh, I'm going to be off Friday and Saturday, take a couple vacation days. i got to get it used up before the 23rd. Use it or lose it. Wife's got to go to the doctor Thursday. I'm going to take her to the doctor and then I'm taking the truck into the tire shop. Get some new new tires put on it. There's not a lot of tread life left. And I had a leaky tire the last few days. But since I took that load of scrap to the scrapyard Monday, by the time I got into town the tire shop was closed. Yesterday I had, a doc I had a doctor appointment after work, so so I made a beeline down to the tire shop today to get that tire patched. Had him give me a quote on some all-terrain tires. Something that'll get me good tread or good traction. There's been times when my truck and trailer was empty and I was trying to back the trailer up and slight incline out here in the field in the grass and I have trouble getting traction. Not so much trouble when I got a load on there. Yeah, we're just about got them all cut. This takes a little time. For, the guy, for all you guys that do the, uh, scrap for a living, this might be a winter time thing for you, if you do it at all. You guys might stay hooked up maybe in the winter. Now, sometimes what you can do, to make it easier to pull through, you can try to straighten these up where they're more straight up and down. For the most part, they just pry right out. Hope you saw that on camera good. That one trying to get away. Let me get a bucket here. Let me go ahead and weigh the weigh the bucket. Zero it out. This is kind of a not a big ceiling fan, but it's not really a small one either. If you get some that's stubborn like that, don't really want to come out. Which I probably could have raised that up a little bit more above the... And just get a hold of it with channel locks. Yeah, pliers might work. It's probably whatever you got that... Needle knows if, needle knows if that's all you got. I know there's a lot of new scrappers out there all the time, so I try to try to remember you guys. Now well, that bearing just disintegrated. Whoa. Okay. Now maybe. It's still not real secure. Cats probably think I'm crazy out here talking to myself. Maybe that's why they always stick close and watch me. Yeah, if you get them where they don't want to come out too good, just pry up a bunch of them and they get the channel locks and do them all at once. Got a 
piece of metal came up there. That one's not wanting to come out. I got the pan on, but it's not really doing any good where I'm at. It's blowing over there where I was. Hopefully a few more weeks I won't need the pan. I think last year for the year I made 4,000 scrapping what I took into the scrap yard. I think I'm up to like 3,300 right now. I've got a few barrels of aluminum I could take in. Barrel of stainless. I've got a bit of copper but I'm not in no hurry. i got probably 100 pounds of brass. I'm not sure what brass is bringing. Yellow brass. You know, a while back I heard $1.70 a pound. So if it's still bringing that, I'd have about $170. That'd take it up to $3,500. Actually, got what, four, months, four more months of the year to go. I know I got a few hundred dollars out here in the yard and shred that's ready to go. Let's see. Yeah, we didn't even quite get half a pound there. Seven point seven ounces. So I say it's a little bit of time to get it. So, what's copper bringing right now? Three something a pound. So there's a dollar and a half, dollar seventy-five there maybe. I mean, not going to get rich off it, but uh, you can make a little bit of money. You know, it's just kind of <laughs> a small savings account. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Standing in front of that fan now, it feels pretty good. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I want to remind you guys of my uh, Amazon affiliate link. I'll zoom up here to my face. But, uh, dirty old sweat rag. Maybe probably longer one of these days. <coughs> Good. I've got uh, different tools, cutting discs, uh, sawzall blades, stuff like that on there, screwdriver sets, a lot of different things that you, you may need or might be able to use, uh, advice that's on there. And uh, I just, you know, I'll have a link in the disc video description area down below. So just go ahead and check it out and see if there's anything you need. And uh, I use the stuff myself, so I, you know I would uh, say the quality is good, and I'm happy with the the products that I use there. So that's why I put the affiliate link up there, affiliate page, where it uh, helps the person that's selling that sell it, and then I get a little commission from Amazon for advertising, I guess, a little advertising fee. <laughs> so, and then uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, uh, take a look around the site, and see what you think. Uh, I have a lot of teardown videos, a lot of videos, stuff I pick up. I don't really go out and do street scrapping like a lot of these guys do. I run an ad through the electric company out here, and uh, it's a free ad, and I have to pretty well put a mileage limit on it, or I'd be going 50 miles out. An hour drive one way and for after scrap, and right now I feel I don't have the time, especially this last month. Man, I was I'm running hard, and if I had to go out there, I would have never made it. I'd, I'd still be backed up. 
and uh, I have had two or three days now, four days with, you know, just a little call here, a little call there, you know, I actually got a chance to catch my breath, you know, my wife actually got to see a little bit of me for the last few days, and plus it was nice getting out of the heat, but you know, I still got a load out of that big job, and I was out there last night unloading it, you know, so with doctors and everything else, it uh, <laughs> takes a lot of your time. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, I think we'll call it quits right here, and we'll see you in the next one. So, happy scrapping.